Angel here. This is part two of my How I Built the Head Hut story series. So uh, if you missed part one, you might want to go back or you might want to skip it. I don't know. I'll probably end up covering various parts of it more than once. This is a new experiment for me, so uh, let me know what you think of it and uh, let me know if you have any questions because I'm going to be doing this uh, raw and off the cuff in the next few weeks probably here. So anyhow, my uh, section one left off after I described my start, how I dug the hole um, for this project and I actually didn't get into the whole story of digging the hole. So that's where I'm going to get into right now. So without further ado, let's do that. Uh, so digging the hole. So here's a picture of the bottom of the head hut here. It's a pretty deep hole. It was uh, about 52 cubic yards of earth by my, by my calculations at one point. I, you know, nobody else measured that for me, but just doing some geometry or something. That's what I figured out. It was roughly. And, um, Basically, that hole that you see there is a little bit bigger than I, I think. I think I had set it to be a uh, 12 foot around, and then I actually pushed it to. Um, actually, I haven't measured it in a while. So, uh, since I, you know, finished plastering it, and also because um, I that was the thing is I left myself so there's a two foot retaining wall. You can kind of see the tires here, um, and so that's 24 inches thick all the way around a retaining wall and uh, and then about six inches of infill and plaster on top of that. So I made my hole bigger and then I kind of wanted to push the boundary of how big I was going to make it anyhow so I so I did. So it's probably 14 feet now uh, finished on the bottom if I had to guess maybe even a little bit bigger. Um, in any case Digging it was quite an experience, and I learned a lot because I didn't, I dug a lot as a kid. I tried to dig out a kiva, interestingly, side story, when I was a child, so I turned into a duck pond. But anyway, um, I've always been a digger, as as I like to say, in any case, and I uh, liked digging. So, And I was also digging another hole for my food dog sculpture, which I'll probably tell you the story of here in the near future as well, if you if you care to know. But in any case... Um, I was, was kind of angry. That's a whole nother story. Uh, I'm going to do a, a why section, but that's, that's part of that story. But I was, I was angry and digging and pounding earth into tires is like some of the best therapy I can think of. If you're angry, you got some anger issues to get out in a healthy way that'll, if you do it right, you could build something with it. So basically I had gotten so angry at myself and at humanity that I, that I, I just needed to do something with that energy because it was going to be destructive otherwise. So I decided to be creative with it. And, uh, and I'm really glad I did. And I recommend that you do that too, if you got some anger and I'm happy to talk to you about that. If you, if you need help with that, I, I might be able to help you. But anyway, um, back to the story, I was digging this hole and it got, it got pretty deep, you know, as it started to get really serious and down deep, uh, I dug it out in in a ring with a ring, an inner and an outer ring. So I didn't dig the whole, um, like the retaining wall part. So I did dig like a 12 foot section and then another four or five foot section behind that that I that I dug out behind it, kind of three or four foot behind it, basically like deep depth wise. I'm talking so that I could get in and out of this hole because I was having to climb in and out of it with and get. I had 20 orange buckets from Home Depot and that's what I used to remove the earth on a shovel and uh, there was no rock in it. It was a pretty amazing dig and it took me better part of a summer or a whole year. I don't even remember. I have some documentation. I'm going to go back and look so I will let you know but uh, it took me quite a while to dig, probably about a year and mostly, you know, not the whole, I didn't dig every day or all day or anything like that so it was a leisurely hour or two here and there wherever I could for quite a while and um <clears throat> At some point, when I got down to the bottom and I started to remove that outer ring, I got really spooked that it might cave in on me. I started reading some horror stories about how, you know, in trying to read about how to be safe, uh, I discovered that there's a lot of ways to be unsafe, and that I was that I was pushing the boundary of that, and that I and that I was in danger of of collapse and being buried alive, and so. Um, so I started putting in that tire retaining wall as I took out that ring in a kind of weird, funky way. Uh, 
and didn't really learn about plumbing the line until I was a few rings up. I started working with the Earthship crew uh, with some interns on an actual Earthship, and they taught me about plumbing the line and scooting it back and some neat stuff, which I did get to incorporate in this wall. But uh, and you can't really tell that there's some there's some funky unplumbedness down there. But luckily, it's a 24 inch or more base, so it's really forgiving for a couple inches of of uh, of off. So it's a great technology for learning uh, rammed earth tire walls, which is what this building, this sculpture, Earthship inspired mega sculpture is. So um, <clears throat> that hole, I actually got scared that I was going to, that I might sink into the earth also because it was real soft and sandy for a lot of it. And I started, I looked up the geology of it online and I realized it's like 3,000 feet thick, deep sand, just sand with big probably empty caverns you know where water used to be it's just runoff granite from the from the mountain up here our sandia mountains i'm in albuquerque new mexico by the way and uh, we have a big mountain range it's about mm, i don't know if it's 10 or 15 miles from my home but it was still just runoff i basically hit an old arroyo bed i think and so it was old uh you could kind of see the twist of it and it was just filled with granite debris from from the mountain so Anyhow, I got scared about sinking into the earth because I got kind of like the heebie-jeebies that I get when I'm up high, only I was down low. And I actually tied myself, I tied a rope around my waist and to a, to a pole that's up in my yard. And, and of course, I realized that I would just die if I got buried alive and the rope wouldn't save me at all. But it would, at least I thought, well, my son or whoever found me could, could put together what happened. I wouldn't have just disappeared and nobody would ever know what happened to me. So, um... So I kept that rope around me for a good part of the summer while I was digging out the, the you know, the deepest of it, <clears throat> or the fall, whenever it was. And uh, so I, I, and my dog fell in the hole a couple of times. He was trying to help me dig, so he was real leery of it. And I got a great, a great wrap-up story to the end of the dig, which was, uh, which was at some point um, the city came back for an inspection because I had gathered all these tires for the tire wall and this and somebody complained one of my neighbors thought I might be losing my mind collecting tires back here and so the city came to check up on me and see and I you know I told them it was for an art project and construction materials and they told me I had a couple weeks to clean it up and get and get things tarped and you know under control so I so they didn't know about this big hole because I hadn't told them about it so um so I filled this hole with tires and I put a giant 50 foot blue tarp over a 30 foot, I think it's a 30 foot blue tarp that I bought special for that. And I, um, for the inspection so that it would look like it was just a tarped, you know, pile of stuff. I did that on both holes, actually filled them with tires and then tarped them. And this one I filled just level with the ground and then tarped it. And when I pulled that, so I filled it up with all these stacks of tires, took me you know, quite a while, a lot, I don't know if you've ever lifted some tires, but they're not super light, uh, even the smaller ones. And I was dealing with lots of different sizes. <clears throat> and anyway, I filled this hole, which was even five feet bigger around on all directions with tires. And I, um, and I pulled that blue tarp over it. And the instant I pulled the blue tarp over the last little bit of the hole, my dog rocket like I could see in his eyes, he was like, Ooh, the hole is gone. And he just ran, tried to run across the tarp, but it was still a hole, just had stacks of tires. So he basically fell like this giant, he's about 130 pound Rottweiler lab mix. And, uh, and he fell it wrapped up in this blue tarp, like a big giant dog burrito in between these stacks of tires. I had a pull out a bunch of tires to get down there and pull him out in the tarp. It was, so he luckily like his legs got folded up to him and he wasn't hurt at all. It was actually really, really funny. I laughed. I still laugh about it when I think about it, but, uh, yeah, that was toward the end of my digging out this hole and then, um, and putting in my, my retaining wall, my tire retaining wall as I did. And I learned a lot about safety and a lot about plumb lines and leveling and, tire sizes and types and to rubber all kinds of things I didn't expect to learn about just in that part of this project and uh, I think that's where I'm going to stop with part two of 
how I built my head hut. And again, this project is, uh, just give you another quick look around. See, it goes up. I built this with my bare hands. It's kind of the, the shape of a, of a hut, of a head. It's got some eye windows in front and, uh, and there's one of them there and there's the other one. Um, I'm sitting by the front door, which is kind of the beak. It's kind of a bird, flower, uh, alien head type of thing. I got a few more finishing details to do on the floor and on the on the uh, latches and, and roof and some ceiling issues. But um, but mostly it's almost done. It's been six years, about oh, six and a half years, I think, since I started it. I've been stalled a bunch of times due to finances and energy. I've broken some bones, not on this, but I uh, actually did break a rib, uh, getting a bottle out of a, out of a dumpster for this project. This, this project has thousands of recycled bottle, reused, repurposed, uh, glass bottles that I cut and put into it. And that'll be another part of the story. Any case, I would love to know if you have any questions, if there's any parts, uh, that you're interested in hearing more about, I'm going to be doing this series on how I made my ha head hut, uh, here over the next couple weeks and sharing that with you. I'd love to hear what you think of it, what questions it sparks in you, if you uh, have any architecture that this reminds you of that you would like to point me to, to look at. Also, if you have any questions about building, I built this largely to inspire other people to just get out there and do stuff, you know, take action. If you're, in, if you want, if you have an idea, just do it, man. Like life is short. You, you're going to get older and older. You're not going to be any younger tomorrow. I promise you. So, uh, I started this right before I turned 40. I'm 46 now. I feel, I feel better and younger than ever in so many ways, but also, Hey, time is ticking along. So get to living your dreams. That's my two cents till next time. Cheers.